meetings and event space, there is a lot of stress. It's kind of like the travel industry, right? You got the passengers, you got the attendees, and they're upset. They want to get into the venue sooner, or they want a better seat, or whatever, whatever the challenge might be. And what I would really encourage those event professionals to consider is I start with the framework and the mindset that I don't know what this person is going through. Right. And if I start there, that means I'm starting with empathy. Yes, right. They might not be able to share with me what their challenge is. You know, when, when you're at that event, you don't realize that this person, they might have saved up for this for an entire year or two years. This might be the one or, and or the last event that they get to take their loved one to because their loved one is dying. Right. And so you don't know what stress that that other person is shouldering, the burden that they're shouldering. And if you step back and go, wait a minute. Let me stay calm in the yeah. midst of whatever the challenge is, and let me be the person who helps to bring calm to the situation. Let me be that person on this team that helps to bring calm to the rest of the team because we're stressed, because we're trying to meet a deadline or whatever the case may be. And if we take that onus, if we take that ownership, we can completely change the entire dynamic of that situation, the entire dynamic of that team, the entire dynamic of that entire event because we chose to remain calm, because we chose to step back and go, wait a minute, getting upset, allowing my feelings, allowing my emotions, allowing my anxiety, my fears, my concerns, whatever the case may be, to get the best of me versus let me figure out how to manage them right now. Let me respond, not react. Let me understand how to minimize the chaos and minimize the challenge, realizing that the challenge is not going to go away but it's not going to get any better if we get upset. It's not going to get any better if we allow our anger and anxiety to get the best of us. So those are kind of the things that I really love to talk to people about because it's easy to just go, bam, I'm upset. This doesn't make sense. This does, doesn't fit, whatever. But when yeah. we step back and go, let's be calm, it changes the dynamics. It, it is a powerful place and a place of empathy It's a, is a structure and a framework to kind of locate your mind. You never know what they're going through. You don't know who you're sitting next to. And, you know, I often joke that that's going to be the title of my first book. You never know, <laughs> because I can't tell you as a human, the judgments, the assessments that go on in your mind, you sit next to somebody and they're a treasure in a gold mine and they were nominated for a Nobel. They were right uh, in the college hall of sports hall of fame. They were their valedictorian. You never know. And you never know when an upset passenger, attendee, what they're dealing with, what they're going through. And it could just be that they've got a little bit of malice and that might be the case, but let's err first in the empathetic realm, so to speak, you know? Yeah. You, you know, as you said that, who you're sitting next to, it, it, it brought back to my mind, I, you know, like you, I fly a lot. I fly professionally, and I'm also flying as a passenger, as, a, as an event professional and speaker. And, and sometimes we get in this mindset of like flying, everybody does it, right? You've got all the budget airlines, and, and it's become commonplace. And so we, we can easily pass judgment. And so I sat on the plane this one day, and I'm looking at the guy, and he's kind of nervous and anxious and whatnot. And I'm thinking, man, just calm down. No big deal. My, me, me, Jason, being right. judgmental. right. And then I said, well, wait a minute, let me actually talk to this guy. Let me pay. And I looked and the guy was looking out the window and he's taking photos and he's taking video and he's, he had a look of awe. And I said, wait a minute, let me actually figure out who this person is yeah. as, as a person. Guess what? The gentleman was older than me, Seth, and he had never been on an airplane a day in his life. And I realized that I was able to help him bring a bit of calm by saying, hey, would you like for me to explain this to you? And he was like, what a, really? what, a, what a gift, both, both you to reconnect with the awe, like, oh yes. my God, we're flying 25,000 feet in the middle of the air above planet earth. And you're like, oh, I do that, you know, every day. And he's like older than you and me. And he's never been on a plane. What a, what a beautiful combo. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was so special and I was so grateful. Like literally it filled me with gratitude. Even now it fills my heart with gratitude to realize that I was able to make a difference. And it filled me with gratitude to just see a person in awe. And sometimes when we step back that empathetic moment and we put ourselves in their shoes and just go, what did it feel like? Or what would it feel like to have lived 40, 50 years and never have been on an airplane before? 
Yeah. Can, can you imagine? Because you can't just tell that person who's afraid to fly, who's never been on an airplane, just trust me. They're like, no, that's scary. Right? Yeah. I'm going to sound like a copycat, but I say this to my children. You know, we've had the fortune of flying intercontinentally between the Americas and and all over, frankly. And we've had our breakdowns where there's been a cancellation, there's been weather, there's been lightning, you name it. And, you know, I'm the pilot, my wife is the pilot, we're, we're co-piloting. So the energy that we transmit is going to transmit down to our family. Yes. And we have experience now. And they see others visibly upset. And I think to myself, gosh, this might be a family that once every five, six years, and they're going to Disney or they're going to visit grandpa. It's like the the gigundous, enormous effort and resources and energy and time and emotion put forth and there's lightning at Newark and they can't take off and everything right. gets unfurled. And it's like, let them have it. It might not be beautiful what they're having, <laughs> you know, but they got to have the space and it's no different exactly. for event planners where you got to have to have that muscle, but knowing that, what is it? Aviate, navigate, Aviate, navigate, communicate, communicate, you know? And I think that that's such a beautiful uh, trilogy of words there. All, all, all of us aviators, we live and die by that. Those, those words.